I paused it and then tried to resume that actual video. And when I turned the camera around, it wouldn't let me resume it. So let's see. Here's my hands in the sink. Maybe you can see it. Maybe not. But anyway, got the cold water running. And I'm just going to literally take my hand and I'm just like massaging each piece slash washing each piece. Like we see these freaking crazy people washing their chicken in bleach and dish liquid and all this crap. Like, dude, no. Now you can use vinegar, the white wine vinegar, this regular white distilled vinegar, um, and some salt and cold water and clean your chicken or just freaking salt and clean the chicken. So I do this like two, three times. Hold that chicken in there, got six pieces. It's just me cooking chicken for myself. And six pieces might seem extreme, but in reality, that's like 12 wing things if you split them up in half. So, no, it's not a lot. So, that's it. Each piece of, I'm literally washing each piece with my hand while it's in here. Um, getting water and touching every little nook and cranny of this wing inside and out and fresh water so that salt loosened up all the gunk off of it you know how you pull the chicken out of the pack and it's really tight like the skin is really really tight and you can't maneuver it well sitting it in cold water with salt loosens up all of that that way you can get all that little gunk off of it so that's the second time dump that water out of it again holding on to the chicken Filling it up another time. I'm doing the same thing. That's my oven. Cream is up to temperature because I'm going to put some biscuits in there also. I'm tired of eating out is why I'm trying to cook every week now. Because Texarkana has the same raggedy ass restaurant. So I'm just trying to start cooking again like I used to. Even though it's just me. So that's the third time. Out. Now, some of these freaking chickens, which this is Tyson pack of chicken wings, rinsing off a knife. I don't know if you can see from the distance, but they have the little feather thingies at the ends, and you just take your knife and pull it away with your knife. And if you some chicken wings have like little yellow something something on it, you scrape it off with the knife. This chicken is fairly clean. It doesn't have that gunk. Sometimes it has extra fat up underneath some of that skin that goes over the drumstick and some more hair slash um, feather thingy. Just pull that out with your knife. Literally so just grabbing it with your thumb and pulling it with the knife. And while you're doing that and looking for more, you're going along and pulling out any little feather thingies that might be along this whole piece here. And scraping any of that yellow crap off or any extra fat off or gunk that might be underneath the stuff. Rinsing your knife along the way. See? Like, I will cut this off and, like, literally cut the wings at the joint in the middle to separate the flat from the drum, let me see if you can see it. Separate the flat from the drum at this joint in here and then um, cut off the tip as well. But I think that's sacrilegious when you're frying whole wings. And plus, my Aunt Frida, rest in peace, will have a whole fit and a half if I were to waste the tips on these chicken wings. Let me turn the water down so. Hopefully you can hear me. Turn the water down as low as possible so you can hear me. And I can still use it. But yeah, Frida would eat these tips. So like we would have chicken wings from someplace, anywhere, out East Camden. And everybody throwing away the tips. Frida, give me those tips. Give me those tips. And she would sit there and eat the tips. Bones and all. Like the cartilage and everything. Like... Yeah, there's some skin around it, and if you're frying it, you can get some good pieces off, but you, to eat the bone and cartilage, yeah, she would do that. 
Like I saw the um video one time. Like I watch all those cooking videos and stuff and those different reels. And it was this Asian lady frying um outside in a big old wok. All tips. Just the tips. No wings, no meat attached to it, just all tips. And they were huge tips. They look like duck, um, the tips from like duck turkey wings or something like that. They were huge. And she was frying them. And she sat there and crunched and ate all of them, the whole thing, like the freaking bone and gristle. That's what Frida used to do. But no, I don't do that. I might, um, see this one. You can't see it because I'm not getting that close because I don't want the chicken juice dripping all on the counter. But there was some yellow bunk on that that I just scraped off. And then you run it under the water and scrape at the same time. Most chicken wings are good, especially Tyson's. Tyson's are good, but they'll always have those little feather tips on there every now and then. But Tyson is pretty clean in reference to how they pack their chicken wings. But sometimes can only imagine I'm going down the assembly line and you miss some tips sometimes. Shit. If I had a quota that I had to clean a thousand chicken wings a day and guess what? I'm going to meet that quota but some of them other efforts going to come through with you lucky it's just a little tip of a feather on it because you come through my assembly line it's going to have a beak and everything has been going in. So I'm gonna rinse my chicken one more time since I scraped all the crap off of it. And scrape, got all the tips of those feathers off of it. Just rinse it this last time. Dump it out. Shake that around, make sure I got all that water off of there. And dump it one last time. Oops, almost off the wing. Oops, got it. Put that aside. Let me wash my hands. Washing my hands really well because we're going to get ready to start seasoning the chicken. That way the water will be off and you can hear me clearly. Who knows how long this video is going to be. But I'm going to do the whole process. Okay, the phone is resting on my paper towel, so pull it up. Might drop it. Up and drop. Hold on. Let me drop my hands and I'll pick it back up. Okay. So, I'm going to put it back in the sink just so you can see me. Maybe I'll slide this a bit closer. So, okay, you can see me. No, don't look at me just adjusting my bra just now. But all right, we're going to start seasoning the chicken with some meat tenderizer, which there's no law of what seasonings go on your chicken wings. Um, there's kind of a law that what goes in your flour, but for the chicken wings itself, it doesn't really matter. You just want it flavorful. You just don't want them plain. But honestly, the real flavor comes from the breading slash flour. But I always put meat tenderizer on everything I cook. Meat, a little bit of meat tenderizer. My staple, always garlic powder. Just a little bit. A little bit of salt. Because that salt that we had wasn't to season the chicken earlier. It was just to loosen up the grime. Grime off of the... Um, meat black pepper just a little bit because like i said the flavor comes from the um <clears throat> comes from the flour a little bit of onion powder teeny teeny bit and the only thing that you need which i gotta open it because i just bought one because I run out all the time and I can barely find it. Let me get a fresh clean knife to pop this open. It's some soul seasoning. This is the best thing and only thing you need, honestly, for your chicken. Some freaking soul seasoning. 
Um, once in a blue moon, if I'll get it and remember to grab some, which don't really need it. Those little Goya Sassoon envelopes. You can put that in your chicken, but you don't really need all that. So seasoning is all you need for your chicken. And that's a generous, generous amount. Like I'll mix all this up and then I'm gonna have to wash my hands again. And then I'm gonna add some more um, garlic and soul seasoning to it. So let me mix this up. Now I got one, two, three, four, six whole wings, which are be the equivalent to 12 little wing thingies. But I'm not gonna cut them up like wing thingies. I'm gonna fry them whole. And I'll show you the secret to doing that. But you're gonna, I'm just working that chicken. I wish you could see it, what I'm doing. I'm just seasoning it well and I'm just moving it around the bowl and massaging the seasoning through. I'm gonna rinse my hand off really well. Not necessarily washing it, I'm just rinsing it off really good. <clears throat> and kind of cleaning it with the paper towel that I keep on standby when I just wash my hands. And now I'm going to put a little bit more garlic powder and soul seasoning to the chicken and work that through again. And we'll really, really work it through. Now I'm going to show you my secret to how you prepare your chicken to put it in a frying pan when it's a whole wing with the tips connected. That way I can, I'll do this and then I'll be able to wash my hands again. Um, you're gonna take the chicken and fold it together. Now, let's see if you can see that. I'm gonna do it over here first by talking about it then I'm gonna try to bring the camera closer to show you. But this is a whole wing, like a trumpet, right? You got the drum and the flat and the tip. So it's, everybody calls it a trumpet, but that's a whole wing, okay? A whole freaking chicken wing. All right, seasoned, smelling good, clean. Now you take it, you hold the drumstick, the drum part in the corner of the um, tip connected to the flat, and you're gonna close and tuck. Tuck the the actual tip behind the drum. This is old school cooking. Some people, I'll be seeing these videos, they frying these chickens with the damn wings still wide open, so the tip all sticking up out the oil, and you can do that if you want, like if you're in a cooking in an air fryer or um, a deep fryer, because obviously that's going to if you're dropping this into a deep fryer, the whole damn thing is going to be submerged so you can be able to cook it. But laying it in a cast iron skillet, you're laying it down flat like this, you need to have a method where the whole thing is being cooked at one time. And that's what you do. You tuck the thing around. So, all right, I got a paper towel right here, so I'm going to get as close as I can. Even though I'm always like, ugh, about stuff dripping on my counter, but I'll, I'll wash all this shit down as I finish cooking anyway, or as I go. But, so I'm going to get closer. I'm holding on to the drum. Can't really tell if you can see because the glare of the window in the kitchen. Holding on to the drum and got my, with my thumb and middle finger and pointer finger, right? Now I have my thumb underneath of the tip that's connected to the flap. Got that underneath of there. And I'm taking it and basically like pushing the flap, the tip behind the drum. So I'm turning it around so I can see it. And it, it just tucks behind there. You just tuck it behind there. But most people, you can, like I said, split them and cut them up. Or, like, you can get a really good knife and cut the joint right here in the middle where the wing, I mean, the flat connects to the drum. And you can cut off the tip. But I wouldn't do that around nobody. Um, over 55 of color because they're going to knock the black off of you. Even if you ain't black, they're going to knock some out of you and off of you if you freaking cut that off and discard it without cooking. Because <laughs> people eat that. I don't see how what they do. But there it is. I'm going to do the rest over this bowl because the shit's dripping. But, and it's really fast to do. I was taking my time just to show you, but 
It's really fast. That's how easy it is to tuck that behind there. And it'll stay closed. That way you can cook it. Now some of them are on different sides. I guess right side, left side. But some of them are a different side. And you're doing the same thing. You're just switching hands. You're tucking in. The, the, actually that one is easier to do. Switching it with the right hand. But um. See. It's the easiest thing. Oh, it had two pieces on that side. And these are big fat wings. Like. I don't know. All these goddamn hormones in this chicken. <laughs> these wings are a bit fat. So luckily I'm only making six. Because that's probably all they can fit in my pan. Because they, they're pretty fat. I had a couple of small ones. But these last two ones are definitely fat. These are some damn. Freaking gents. GNC wings or some shit. <laughs> but you tuck that tip behind that drum. Just tucking it. So all my. Chicken is tucked. Cut this water on to wash my hands again. I'm gonna pull my bowl up here away from it so no soap will have a chance to get on it. Just washing it. Um show you about this oil. Before I start putting chicken in there, okay, get me some more paper towel so the phone's gonna properly fall again. Oh, it didn't fall, it just went out the roof. Oh, there it is. Hold on. Okay. Um, get me a fork ready. Because not only do I need the fork to maneuver the chicken around in the pan, I need the fork to waken up my flour. I have flour. Let's see. I'm not going to risk pausing it again to try to flip the freaking camera. I'm just going to hold it. But I have flour that I already have. Crap. I already have um, ready in the freezer. I keep it up for a bit at a time. I keep it stored in the freezer. The freezer safe container. With the lid on in the freezer and it's already seasoned. I use this flour for whatever I fry. So chicken. Hold on. Let me fix my shirt. Too much cleavage there. <clears throat> so chicken, pork chops, whatever I fry. I use this secret blend. Which ain't really a secret. It's just all purpose flour. And all those seasonings that I mentioned above. But a generous amount of the um, so seasoning. And pepper. And also this. You can use half of this. The House of Autry seasoning. This was, I supposed to say this to my mom. I think this one was for my mom or this one was for me. I might have took my mom hers already. But every time I see this in the store, I'll get some. And this is really good to fry your chicken in. And you mix it with half flour, half this. And season it the way you would. And it's, it's just really, really good. Okay, so my pan is ready. How you tell that your frying pan is ready for cooking. I run my fingers under cold water. And throw a little bit of water in there. Started making that sound. Guess what? It ready. Uh, hold on. Let me go get a plate. Because I just season. I'm gonna put this back down here. I just season my chicken. You know, after I clean it well, I'll season it. And then I'll um, flour it and let it sit on the plate. And then right before I dump it in the grease in the fryer, I'll dip it in the flour again. Cause I don't do a batter, like a wet batter and stuff. I think that wet batter and then batter it again with the dry and all that before you fry, that's pretty much for like skinless stuff. Stuff that you got to have something to stick to it. You got skin on chicken wings. You don't need all of that. And honestly, like, it'll give that really, really thick batter, like, um, like a church's chicken or Popeye's or something like that. I don't, I don't really care for that. Now, I love Popeye's chicken, but I don't care for that um, batter to be like that. I like my batter to be old school. Um, somebody, grandma making fried chicken for the 
the church picnic or the after dinner meals on Sunday. Um, after church meals, those little plates that be selling for the building fund. Because they're trying to get another building for the past 20 years and ain't get one yet. I mean, that's the type of chicken I like. Old school fried chicken. You don't need no wet batter. Wet batter probably more country fried. That's why Church's Chicken does it. That's why Popeye's does it, even though Popeye's from Louisiana or whatever. You know, I'm not knocking Popeye's chicken. That's my favorite chicken. I'm going to fry chicken if it's not my chicken or my mom's chicken. I love my mom's fried chicken. It's the best. Mine's is probably just as good or better or a little different. So, yeah, don't send that to her. But um, I don't like the wet batter unless you're, you want to thicker coating on your meat and it's really preferred for freaking um like i said skinless stuff so like if you're doing chicken tenders at home or like a fish you know you'll make a wet batter and then the flour the dry batter to make it that texture but i don't care for that so i'm gonna I woke up my flour by sifting it with the fork and I'm going to put some more soul seasoning in my batter, my flour. See, I'm saying batter. And I'm waking it up again with the fork. And when I say waking it up, I'm just twirling the fork around in it to distribute that and just, you know, bring the air back to it because it was sitting in the freezer for a couple of weeks. And that's where I keep it. Now, people fry their chicken in a, I mean, like dip their chicken in a container, seal it, shake it up, shake it all around, put it to the side, drop it, put it in a bag, plastic bag, a paper bag, and do all that crap. No, you ain't got to do all of that. You get the same results by doing what I'm doing, which is I take two pieces at a time, dip them in there, and just work that flour over it, flip them over a couple times. Grab some flour and throw it on that side, flip it, do it again. Shake it all real good into the flour, sit it to the side. And to the side, I'm sitting it on a plate. Do two more pieces. Use your hands, you can use your tongs if you're just not that experienced and blah, blah, blah. But guess what? I use my hands. Ain't nobody got no salmonella. The whole freak. I've been frying chicken since 1985 and everybody's still alive. Well, a couple people have gone on to glory since then. But it's not because they ate my chicken. Okay? They're the ones that go on and recipes. and Like, don't even grab and take recipes from our family from over these years you just watch them doing stuff in the kitchen for years and you adapt if you like to eat food guess what you're gonna learn how to cook this crap um but i've never ever received a recipe from anybody any significant loved one that i prepare and make stuff from i just watched them cooked over the years and adjust and adapt to your tastes and your likes and it is what it is. But I'm just dipping a wing in the flour. I'll, when it's on one side, I'm taking some flour from the side and dumping it on that wing. Then I'm flipping it over and doing the same thing on the other side. Dumping it on that wing. And then you just sit it on a plate <clears throat> to the side. Frink, sprinkle the flour up off your fingers into the flour because you can reuse the same crap putting that down to the side taking my um fork and getting that air back through my flour again because when you stick the wet chicken although it's not wet from a batter it's just wet from me clean cleaning it it'll um cake up that flour a little bit you want the air to constantly be in that flour so you just take your fork and waking it up again and now I set my flour oil is ready now the I remember I kind of like 
lay them on the plate counterclockwise so I know which way to grab. But I'll just grab another piece. Like they've been sitting with the flour on it. I'll grab another piece and dip it directly into the flour right before I drain. So it'll still have a really nice crust to it. But without you having to do all that batter and all that crap, this will adhere to the chicken. And it, trust me, it'll make it crispy and delicious. So I'll take another piece. And this time I'm working way, way faster. Let's see. See if I can turn you this way. So you can see me drop it into the grease. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to only work with one hand. So this is the prime pan. All right. So. And you're going to lay it down. It, it's, it's not a science which way you lay it down. I'm going to lay it down um, with the juicy part, the untucked part up. So the tucked part is going to lay down in the flour, if that makes any sense. You hear that? It's the frying. Turn it down a little bit so I get them all up in there. Okay. And you know how many you're putting in ahead of time, so where it goes, you can maneuver it around in your pan so you know where to put them. Like these are some big, big pieces. This one right here, I got this huge piece of chicken. I love fried chicken. I love it fresh out the grease with some Louisiana hot sauce on it. Or I like to take a couple pieces, wrap them in foil, and stick them in the freezer for a couple minutes to get them cold. Because I like cold fried chicken. So that's six pieces that actually filled up my frying pan. I'm taking my fork to just, you don't really want to F with your chicken once you put them in there. I'm just that last piece was a bit thick, so I had to move it around to get it. I'm going to wash my hands and adjust my temperature on there. So hold up. Just washing my hands. some paper towel in. That's why I go through mad paper towel, y'all. I'm constantly washing my hands while I'm cooking. Ready, yada. We'll put all these seasonings away. And then the best thing about, like, cooking, I mean, if you're cleaning, I mean, the best thing to do when, before you start cooking is start with a clean kitchen. No dishes and crap in the sink. So that way, you'll clean as you go. And when it's time for you to sit down and start eating, you don't have a bunch of crap to do. I'm closing my flour back up. I'm going to put this right back in the freezer. I'm going to use it. Right back in the freezer. Um, now I'm going to adjust my heat. Put it back up a little. I dropped it down when I was adding chicken. But you don't really need it more than at a medium heat. Let me throw this crap in the pan. Like I said, I always get it ready to clean as I go. Now I'm collecting all the paper towels. I'm going to wipe up some of the gunk with the wet paper towels that I used to dry my hands. And wipe up the flour with. That's all over the place. Although I'm going to spray and wipe this down in a minute. I'm going to wash these dishes. But... That's how easy it is to clean up this stuff. I'm going to have some green beans and the cheddar and broccoli rice with it. Because that's the combination I like when I'm eating some hot fried chicken. 
with some hot sauce. Also love it with some macaroni sauce. I mean, you fried chicken or any damn thing, but today I've just been craving and wanting the um, cheddar and broccoli rice. But even though I don't eat broccoli, but I like that rice. Um, so it's frying. Let me see if I can. I hate that I can't put this view over easily, but let's see. Let's see. It's frying. That's what you want it to look like. And oh, what I was saying is you don't need the heat more than medium on a cast iron skillet with this kind of iron. I think it's called iron on the stove. Like the coils one. Now like uh, those flat top um, electric stoves that are like gas. Not gas, excuse me. The glass top. Oh, those aren't the best for the cast iron skillet but mine is um and it's a really really good cast iron skillet i got this from my mom who got it from her mom so who knows how old this skillet is um this dude i used to be married to actually looked it up and um this skillet is worth like three four hundred bucks because it's so old um it has griffin and some number on the bottom i forget I'm going to look it up after I clean it and tell you about it. But it's worth some money. Not a traditional, you know, value on it. It's way, it's for, I mean, it's worth so much more than three, four hundred bucks to me. It's prices because it's my grandmom's and it's the best cast iron skillet ever. I've had this for forever and I'm always going to have it and I just love it. So I got that on medium. I'm getting ready to... While that's cooking, I'm going to um, prepare just a bag of rice, those little Lipton's cheddar broccoli rice. That's what I like for that. And some canned green beans. Get ready, put them on real fast, and I'll be back when the chicken gets closer to finish so you can see how it looks. Bye.